Hello everyone, it's Barbara and welcome to Pick a Stack Wednesday. Let's start with a little golden singing bell to charge up the crystals and to help you receive in your heart all the messages that you need to receive today. I hope you're all doing well. All right, let's get started. So today, the message I received from my guides was, we need a lot of amethyst. And if you know anything about amethyst, it's a master healer. So you've got a whole bunch of amethyst here. We've got obelisks and and for free form, and we've got the the druzies, and there's a generator and a generator, and it's it's this is just chock full of healing energy. So if you concentrate on all this amethyst, um, ask it to bring you healing energy, and just be open to receive. Okay. So while we're doing this, while I'm talking, while you're listening. Just know that you, you have the opportunity to receive healing energy. So let's get started. If you don't know about Pick a Stack Wednesday, um, we've got three stacks here. Stack one, two, three. Each stack has two tarot cards from two different decks, one oracle card, and a crystal. And each one tells a story. So your mission is to think of an idea, issue, or question and it can be about yourself, somebody else, about the whole world in general, and then pick a stack or two stacks or all three. It's up to you. There's no rules here. You make the rules. Okay. So let's get started with stack number one. And if you chose stack number one, your stone today is Apache Tears. So Apache Tears are a form of obsidian and have many of the same properties like grounding and protection. Um, Apache tears can help us heal from the past and give comfort in time of grief and sorrow. They can give insight and acceptance and clarity of thought. They can help remove blockages in emotional patterns. Apache tears allow cleansing to take place helping to purify blood, boosting the immune system, and counteracting negativity. They promote a forgiving attitude and a release of grievances. They also help with self-limitations. So that is Apache Tears. All right, your first card is from the Spirit Song Tarot deck. And it is the Eight of Crystals. Eight of Crystals. In this deck, the Eight of Crystals is represented by the fabulous Buffalo. And crystals um, are equivalent to Earth. And this card is all about, it says dedication and progress. But it's also about abundance because eight is the number of abundance. Um, and if you think about the buffalo, it's a great, big, very earthy animal. And um, so, it, you know, the buffalo is very determined. If it wants to go in a certain direction, it's going to go. And if it wants something, it's going to get that something. Um, so that's that that dedication, but also determination. Um so whatever it is that you were thinking of or had a question about, you need to um, have that dedication or determination. Like, it's, things aren't just going to happen for you. You have to make them happen. So I feel like part of this is all about the intention that we put out there and then the progress we make towards that intention. You can put an intention out there, but if you're not doing something about it, it's not going to happen. You have to participate. We came here to this earth reality to, to experience and participate. So hopefully you're participating in whatever it is you want to manifest. But again, this is all about um, abundance. So that's a good thing. 
So from the eight of crystals, which is earth, it's also equivalent to pentacles in other decks. We've got the seven of pentacles. So again, this is earth. It's kind of like the seven of crystals, seven of earth. Um, we went from the eight to the seven. Um, but if you look at this, this person is wearing, there's lots of green in here. Okay. Green is also about abundance and there's an abundance of whatever this is. Um, it almost looks like mistletoe. Um, and it looks like they're trimming it to use in something. Um, seven means you're on the right path. And I don't want to say like this is a counting down because it goes from eight to seven, but it kind of is. Um, it kind of feels like that to me. We went from the eight of abundance down to the seven. What are we counting down to? That's up to you. But this person here is using what's around them to benefit themselves. So use what you have. You know, we're surrounded by so much abundance that we take for granted and we don't even pay attention to it. Like your yard may be full of weeds. And I look at, quote, weeds, end quote, and I think, okay, what is that weed good for? Um, is it, what is it telling me? I've got a one particular weed in my yard this year that is just going crazy. And I looked it up and it's, it's a painkiller. Um, and I thought that was really interesting. Huh? I have pain in my shoulder and my yard is surrounded with this quote weed. That's a painkiller. So we need to use what is near us and what's around us. Because if we pay attention, mama nature Mother Earth gives us what we need. And because this card is so green and these are both earthy cards, pay attention to what is around you because Mama Earth is probably bringing you something that, that you need. Your third card is from the Sacred Spirit Oracle deck. And we have this beautiful owl. This is card number 28 in this deck and it's called Mindful Wisdom, Create Inner Harmony. And let's see what the book says about card number 28. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was talking a lot today and uh, I'm going to lose my voice. So mindfulness is the simple act of being present in each moment. But for most people, it is not always achievable during daily life. Complications of employment, relationships, children, social activities, and career choices can all seem to distract us from achieving this goal. It is only when you choose to become present that you receive clarity of consciousness, peace of mind, and objective understanding surrounding current issues. The owl is a representation of inner knowing and mindfulness. Now is the time to journey inwards to access your inner knowing and personal wisdom through mindful practice to create a homeostasis, an equilibrium in your heart and mind. Bring yourself back to a heart space where you can approach anything with calmness and clarity. But also, right now, place yourself of value. When the owl appears in your life, it encourages you to use strong intuition to gain wisdom about matters that you should not ignore. Most important, self-worth and confidence. The affirmation that goes with this card is, I react sensitively to others as I respect my personal boundaries. And too many times, what do we do? We say, sure, yeah, no problem. We don't respect our own boundaries, so therefore nobody else respects our boundaries. So we've got these very earthy cards. Um, you got the buffalo, the eight. You've got this card that's... Um, on the right path, using what's around you, but also being mindful, living mindfully. I feel like that's, you know, don't waste time, don't waste things. And when I say don't waste time, I don't mean we're wasting time, but be mindful of how you spend your time. That's a better way to put it. You don't have to be productive. 
but you have to feel fulfilled. There's a difference. So that is stack number one. You're on the right path. Use what's around you. And connect with Mother Earth. Okay, if you chose stack number two, your stone is sodalite. And this one practically jumped out of the bowl. It was like, I want to be a star. So sodalite is a stone of logic, rationality, and efficiency. It is helpful for work in groups by stimulating thought and protecting against negative energies. It can heal breaches in communication. It is a stone of truth and it can help end arguments or other disagreements. This is really good for the throat chakra, which is our chakra of communication. Um, it is useful for honesty in communicating and emotions and can help with Increasing your intelligence, knowledge, and learning, and can unite the logical with the spiritual. It's also associated with the thyroid and can help you lose weight. Beneficial for the glands, digestive system, relieving insomnia, and um, it's good for colds, like head colds, or when, the cold, when your cold is in your throat. So um, wearing this at your throat makes it even more powerful. Carrying it with you, especially in the upper body, is very helpful as well. So that is sodalite. All right. So your first card is from the Spirit Song Tarot deck. And it is the Three of Feathers. And we got this, I think it was last week or the week before. No, I think it was last week. The three of feathers, this is like the three of air or the three of swords. Um, this little moth is going towards the light. You've got the sun behind here and it's going towards the light. This is very airy. And you know, it's interesting because the past couple weeks, and this isn't just me, it's a lot of my customers have been saying the same thing and all my clients too, that we... A lot of us don't feel grounded. We feel very airy fairy. I know I personally have dropped more things in the last couple weeks than probably the last six months. Um, and yeah, I've been breaking stuff. I, I, it's like I have one step in this reality and one step in a higher dimension, and I just I forget that I'm holding something or I, I don't see the. The thing that's in front of me and I just knock it over <coughs> excuse me and um, it's really interesting because this card reminds me of that you've got the feathers but then you've also got this moth that's up here it is not grounded so I feel like you know even though we had this last week that the message here is a little bit different it's more about you know you're up here Yes, you're working with the light, but you got to stay grounded too, um, or you're going to knock stuff over. So we need to remember where we are and that we have to be grounded to the earth. Okay, the feathers are great, but birds got to land at some point. Okay, they can't fly all the time. They have to land in a nest, in a tree, on the ground. So I feel like that's the message this week with this card. Interestingly, so now we have the Ace of Swords. This is basically swords as well. In this deck, it's called Feathers. So we've got the Three of Feathers and the Ace of Feathers, or the Three of Swords and the Ace of Swords. They're both air cards. We go from the three to the one. This is all about new beginnings, but it's also about the truth. Now, it's it, it, this picture reminds me of, you know, Excalibur, um, the Lady of the Lake holding up 
Excalibur out of the water. And I was just talking about being more grounded. Well, the sword is attached to somebody's hand, which is attached to their arm, and they're actually in the water or probably on the land under the water. So there is some grounding going on here. And it's almost like once you ground yourself, you're going to have this new beginning. You're going to get Excalibur, whatever that means to you. You know, Excalibur could mean a new job, a new relationship, a new something. But something new is coming in and um, it happens once you ground yourself. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, how do I ground myself? That depends on you. Some of us are, are um, grounded by what we eat, food from the ground. Um, some of us are grounded when we go outside and stand barefoot in the grass or on the dirt, or we hold certain stones. Um, so hugging a tree could be grounding. Um, sometimes it smells. Earthy smells can be very grounding. So whatever feels right to you, I mean, it could be the amethyst here. Um, whatever feels right to you, that's what you need to go with. Okay, but once you ground yourself, you're gonna get a new beginning. I think that's awesome. Your third card is from the Sacred Spirit Oracle deck. And we have card number 19, Guardian. Look at that cool wolf. So let's see what it's, the book says about card number 19. Guard your energy. Guardians of the spiritual realm are perceived differently across all cultures and religions. Totem spirits, angels, and other shamanic spirit helpers are assigned to everyone at birth and can be discovered through vision quests, meditations, and deep forms of prayer. In ancient times, the medicinal assistance of, a, <laughs> of hallucinogenic plants was used. Every individual has a guardian or guiding spirit that watches over them during their lifetime. Different stages of life can bring change to those helpers, depending on what lessons or guidance are needed to complete levels of soul growth for the soul's ascension. Guardian spirits are often perceived in animal forms due to the recognition of their personal characteristics and mannerisms. The wolf depicts challenges in personal boundaries and being able to trust others with your emotional vulnerability. Right now, you must guard your energy fiercely. Be mindful of how you feel energetically around others. Exhaustion, fatigue, confusion, and clouded judgment is possible if you allow yourself to be influenced, uh, influenced by these energy vampires. Only you decide on a conscious or subconscious level if you wish to interact with these toxic energies. Use careful practice in your holistic counseling, intuitive, and healing practices. As you might be absorbing unwanted energy from others and need to clear and ground yourself. Isn't that interesting? Because I said you needed to ground yourself. After each session or experience, to minimize mental and physical fatigue. And you know, that's a really good point that a lot of us are feeling um, exhausted lately. And part of it is because we are not grounding ourselves. The affirmation for this card is, I am clearly guided by my divine guardian. I am protected always. So that is stack number two. Be grounded, watch your energy, protect yourself, and new things are right around the corner. All right, stack number three. <clears throat> if you chose stack number three, your stone is Asterite Serpentine. Asterite Serpentine is a stone highly valued by the ancient Aztecs. It is said to be one of the safest stones 
to aid you in the activation of your Kundalini. Now that's really interesting as well because I've had a lot of people contact me in the last, just the last couple weeks that things are going on in their bodies and they're not really sure what it is or they've figured it out that it is their Kundalini and help. Well, this is a good stone for that. Um, the Kundalini energy or also called the serpent power resides at the base of your spine until it's awakened. And using this stone is beneficial to help you clear any blockages you may have in your chakras. And that'll help with that kundalini activation. Serpentine can also help you communicate with elemental beings as it is a very earthly stone. Um, it can help with issues with your heart or lungs. So it would be very beneficial to wear it um, on your upper body in a pocket or jewelry or however you wear your stones on your upper body. So that is your stone. I'm going to put that right there. Your first card is from the Spirit Song Tarot deck. <laughs> I have to laugh because the stone is all about awakening the Kundalini and the first card is awakening, renewal, enlightenment. This is all about awakening the Kundalini. You gotta love it. There's just no coincidences. And this is represented by the beautiful peacock. Um, this this card is card number 20 and it's, the, it's major arcana. Now, card number 21 is the final card in the major arcana. And once you reach card number 21, it's like you've completed your cycle. So this is the second to the last step of completing your cycle. And it is awakening. Whatever you're going through or about to go through, this has to do with your awakening. It has to do with your ascension. So just know that the physical symptoms that you've been experiencing, that's part of this. The emotional symptoms, if you're extra emotional lately, that's part of this. Your intuition, your spiritual self is probably more enhanced and that's part of this as well. Um, mentally, you may know things that you didn't know you knew or you don't know how you got to know them. That's part of this process. So just know that this is going on. Don't freak out. Maybe you want to learn a little bit about awakening the Kundalini. Um, and I say go for it because it is time. It is time for you to awaken your Kundalini and then you can help others. It doesn't mean you're going to go around and zap people and say, hey, your Kundalini is awake. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. But you can help others when they say, hey, this is going on in my life. Do you have any clue as to what I need to do? And you can say, why, yes, I do. Because that happened to me. So this is all about your awakening, but also helping others with their awakening. Okay, your second card is from the Druid Craft Tarot, and it's the Six of Cups. And this is like the Six of Water. And we see this man standing in his in his abode and he's looking out at his children and they have five cups and they're all full. They're overflowing with goodies. And it's a beautiful day. We got blue sky and white fluffy clouds and green grass. And he's got his cup and it's just like everything is exactly as it's supposed to be. That's how I feel with this card today. Everything is exactly how it's supposed to be. So if you're wondering, especially all the stuff that's going on in the world, you know, when is this going to stop? What, you know, when are things going to change? Remember today, everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be today. We are in a, a time of upheaval. That's the word they're giving me upheaval and, and, 
there's changes that are going on every day right now and they're so obvious and prominent and we need to just know that everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be and because you have this awakening card you also need to take the high road you need to be the one that's here that's content that okay my life is good my life is con is the way it's supposed to be and I'm not stressed out about anything. There's no need to be stressed out about anything right now. And I know there's some of you that are going to say, oh, but Barbara, what, what about all this stuff on the news? Turn your TV off and stop watching the news. Just turn it off. Because all that's going to do is make you frustrated and angry and upset. And you need to just not watch that. Okay? Um... It's meant to make you angry. So turn it off. Focus instead on your community. Your community is right outside your window. Watch the, watch the neighbor's kids through the window. Watch them play in the sandbox. I got to watch some kids in, playing in a sandbox last Sunday, and it was so enjoyable to just sit there and watch kids play. They don't pay any attention to what's on the news or what's going on in other cities. So that was, that was nice to be kind of lifted up by their energy. Try it. Your third card is from the Sacred Spirit deck, and you've got card number two, Ascended Masters. Create open communication. Let's see what card number two says. Throughout time, human beings have looked to spiritual teachers, gurus, and philosophers for guidance and wisdom in their everyday lives. Regardless of religious background or affiliation, people gravitate towards those who have achieved levels of ascension on the physical plane. When working with high frequencies or energies, such as ascended masters, be sure to always invoke or request the aspects that exist within 100% pure light frequencies. Right now, you are required to connect to higher wisdom previously shared with a collective purpose. Daily rituals and routine are essential to establish stability through decision-making processes. Open your mind and vision to signs and symbols from the Ascended Master realm. Many masters are associated with animals and symbols. Pay attention to art and imagery that you may feel emotionally or strongly connected to now as you are being guided divinely. The affirmation for this card is, I am a clear channel of divine knowledge. I share this wisdom with compassion and confidence. So, Stack number three is very powerful today. Well, I mean, all the stacks are always powerful, but you've got Kundalini. You've got, you've got your crystal about Kundalini awakening. You've got this card about awakening. Everything is as exactly as it should be. And now you've got Ascended Masters. Um, very powerful. Just know that if you chose stack number three, you are on the right path and you have a higher calling. And you need to make sure that every day, you know, I talked about a ritual. Every morning when you wake up, have a ritual that raises your frequency or that makes sure that your frequency is higher. And, and try to keep it up there all day long. If it starts coming down, recognize the fact that it's coming down and say, no, 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 no. I'm going to wrap myself in that beautiful Orchid Pink 880 cloud and I am going to bring down fifth dimensional energy, um, whatever it is that you do. Listen to singing bells and bowls, play with crystals, meditate, do yoga, tai chi, whatever it is you do. Keep it up because you know what? You are the shining light for everybody else. You are the shining light for everybody else. At least for this week. <laughs> we won't make you be that all the time unless you want to be. It's a choice. 
All right, let's have a little singing bell. I thank you for joining me today. I send you blessings of love, light, peace, joy, happiness, success, and divine health. I love you. I send you hugs. And I hope you have a beautiful rest of the day. Thank you so much for joining me. Namaste.